Hi and welcome to this uh, short video about um, the HTC Touch processor um, in particular the speed of the processor. One of the um, downsides of the HTC Touch uh, depending on what your needs are is that the processor is very slow and you can see on the device information that the speed of the processor here is only 201 megahertz um, a lot of modern pocket PCs will be running at uh, 4 or 500 megahertz so on that basis this is a particularly slow device now that has an upside and a downside the upside is that a slow processor means it's going to be very efficient on the battery it's not going to be pulling much current um, it's also presumably going to make the device a lot cheaper to buy because it's uh, using a less expensive processor uh, on the downside of course is that it can be uh, very slow to use simple as that some applications will take quite a while to open that said um, I've yet to find a piece of software that, I, that um, won't work on this machine um, uh, I run TomTom Tom and lots of other fairly uh, resource hungry uh, applications and they work very very nicely but sometimes um, you do need an extra bit of speed um, above 201 megahertz so we can have a look at um, one way in which you can deal with that but with a, a, uh, a cautionary message I want to show you a program called battery status and uh, here it is installed on this device um, battery status is an application which has a today plugin which I'll show you in a minute um, which gives you information about the device um, including the battery status funnily enough um, but the one thing I want to show you on this uh, piece of software is uh, this tab here, OMAP. Let's just click on that. And what this does is it allows you to overclock the speed of your processor. So you can see here the actual processor speed is 201 megahertz, which is the standard speed for the HTC Touch. And you can have an option here to overclock it to a different speed. If I actually press on this drop down box, you'll see that there's a selection there of different processor speeds. Now, um, in my experience, it will not go above 286 megahertz. If you try to go above 286 megahertz, um, it crashes the machine. It does in my case. Um, I think the, the simple answer to it is uh, that you keep the overclocking as low as possible. Now, there needs to be a word of warning here. If you use overclocking software like this, then basically what you're doing is making the processor run faster than it is designed to run. And it's rather like uh, over-revving an engine, I guess. If you redline an engine, then you're at risk of damaging the engine. So there's a, even a, a warning here from the uh, person who wrote the program, which says, use the OMAP features on your own risk. I am not responsible for any damage caused by this piece of software. In other words, there is a risk that you could damage the processor, and if you damage the processor, then you've got rather an expensive piece of rubbish to put in the bin, and I don't think HTC um, would look too kindly under a warranty to have it fixed when they find out you've been overclocking the processor. In other words, you're getting it to do something it's not designed to do. If we have a look at the Today screen, what battery status does is it gives you this, this information. You can see here... Um, first thing of course is that it shows you how much charge you've got on your battery it's 72% at the moment it shows you your uh, telephone uh, provider or service provider it shows you the current processor speed um, it gives you other information including um, the signal strength of your um, phone provider uh, it gives you information about memory, available memory in this case P means for program memory, I've got 15.8 megabytes of free program memory at the moment which is another issue with the HTC Touch which I'll try uh, talk about uh, another time um, and here it even tells you the temperature of the processor which is quite interesting at the moment this is running at 25 Celsius and over here it tells you what the current draw is on the battery uh, at the moment it's 91 milliamps now if I ta tap on uh, the the processor speed here, 201 megahertz. remember, is the standard speed or the correct speed really for the HTC Touch. If I tap on that, it changes to 286 megahertz, being the maximum speed that I selected in the battery status program. 
and it's now technically running at 286 megahertz. Whether it is genuinely running at 286 megahertz or not, I don't know. Some of you may be familiar with the program TCPMP, which is an ed ed excellent um, video player for a pocket PC. And um, I'm running the uh, HTC Touch at 286 megahertz, as I showed you earlier. But um, TCPMP actually shows it running at 246 megahertz. Um, so obviously there's a disconnect there somewhere. Um, I don't know what the genuine speed is, whether it's 286 or whether it's 246 or even a different speed. But I suppose the point being is that TCPMP is recognising the processor running faster uh, than the standard 201 megahertz. So battery status is obviously doing something. Okay, so um, we are reporting with the use of battery status that we are running at 286 megahertz like that. Uh, TCPMP seemed to recognize that the processor was running faster than it actually was but at the end of the day does it actually make a difference? Well let me put it back to 201 megahertz and let's run a video file. Okay I'm going to run a, a Windows Movie um, file and I'm going to put it into full screen mode because that's how we would want to watch a movie and can you see how jerky that is? Very, very jerky. Uh, that's the Warner Brothers startup logo. But you can see how jerky that was. So let's stop it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it to 286 megahertz and I'm going to run the same video file again. Okay, let's run this file again, again in full screen. Now look at it much smoother. That is definitely an improvement. Um, completely smooth video quality using the 286 megahertz. We just go back into the battery status program briefly um, into the OMAP settings uh, where we had the processor speed. Um, there's an option here overclock on wake up and you can see it is not ticked. If I tick that and I restart my machine it will try and restart at that speed not that speed. Now if you have a problem with running it at a faster speed then you could get into a situation where you're uh, pocket PC will not reboot because it keeps on crashing on the higher speed so don't tick that one um, unless you're absolutely confident that it will always work properly at the speed that you select um, so that's uh, a word of warning on that one don't forget that warning there from the uh, the guy that wrote the software and if you're interested in knowing more about this uh, piece of software there's the uh, there's the information there um, from the uh, the chap who wrote it and um, uh, I, you know, I think it's uh, very effective. It certainly uh, allows you to use um, your HTC Touch um, with a faster processor speed um, for the odd application where you just need that extra uh, bit of power, um, as um, as I demonstrated on that video there. So, thanks for watching. I hope that's useful. And um, but as I say, be cautious with this piece of software because um, it uh, you don't want to damage your um, uh, your HTC Touch. Um, the battery status software works for um, pocket PC so if you've got a, a different make of pocket PC um, then uh, I guess it will work on that as well I don't know probably best to um, read around forums and uh, and the such like just to, to double check um, to make sure that um, people haven't had any adverse experience with um, uh, overclocking software. This is not the only type of uh, overclocking software out there but this is the only one I've, I've ever used. So with that hope you found that useful and uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'll probably do another video at some point talking about the memory leaks on the HTC Touch which is a great annoyance. Until then all the best. Cheers.